unprecedented success of L.A.'s Quiet Riot in 1983 turned the music business upside down. Heavy metal, the music for outcasts, was sitting atop the pop charts, and record companies on both coasts raced to cash in. As record companies started seeing gold in them lower hills, you know, and started trying to figure out how to cookie cutter a new metal movement, hair metal was defined and born. We were an accident looking for a place to happen. The world was ready, and the industry was ready. We thought about what we were getting into. We knew there was going to be a lot of everything, and that's what we wanted. It just catapulted. We went from moving the pool table at the Pine Grove Inn to playing Texas Stadium with Aerosmith. Hair metal in the 80s, it's a combination of popular music and heavy metal. It's really image-based, like, you know, it's all about your haircut and having a cute bass player and make facial makeup and videos with hot chicks. During that period of time, you had this new thing called MTV. All of a sudden, all those videos had to be bigger, bigger than life. Luckily, there are all these fans in Los Angeles who base their whole music career on having a good, shocking visual image. Quiet Riot was the first metal band who had like a number one record, but Motley Crue was different. They pretty much became the first really important band from LA during the 80s. LA is like decadent, you know? And they were the band that came out of LA that was decadent, man. They were just, you could tell, they just dripped with sleaze and sex and blood and fire. I think there's that rebellious part of us that wanted to really stand out and shock the out of people. We were like the weirdest dudes on the planet walking down Sunset Boulevard in stiletto heels, makeup, crazy hair, tattooed, drunk. Clearly, we did not give a we did not care about consequences. We were the first band that was doing something that was against the grain of the time. Musically, it was abysmal. You couldn't understand a word that they were singing. I don't even know if they were playing, but they were blowing shit up. <laughs> they, were, they were lighting each other on fire. When I went backstage and talked to him for five minutes, I was like, you know, I'm Doc McGee, and he goes, yeah, great, dude. So here, give me a beer. Anybody got any drugs? <laughs> They were just like this gang that got to be go around L.A. and torture people <laughs> with, with all their antics. We thought we were invincible, you know? I mean, we'd be walking down the street and look over at, a, a, you know, an unmanned cop car, and Nikki would just go over and grab someone and just smash a, a, you know, a bottle through the, through the windshield of the cop car and start pissing in it. And, um, you know, I'd, I'd you know, often look around going like, I can't believe we're getting away with it. Like, we got away with murder. Look at the stuff we did on stage. You can tell us sensor bars across. This chick's out in the audience, man. If it wasn't for you, I'd never take it off. I always said that uh, the worst thing that could ever happen to Motley Crue would be if somebody caught us drinking a glass of milk. It could, could, could be, like, a career chattering <laughs> anything else is okay you know drug busts and car crashes and fights that's okay <laughs> Like Led Zeppelin 15 years before, Motley Crue's offstage debauchery caused a huge buzz. Audiences flocked to their shows to witness the spectacle, and the crew delivered every night. There's different kinds of success. There's chart success and album sales success. We didn't really think like that. We hadn't been um, jaded yet. 
we thought success was how many more amps could we get on stage? How much bigger could we make our pyro? That was what we wanted. We would go see other bands and go, we can top that. You know, explosions, uh, you know, volume, the biggest PA system on the planet, the biggest light show in the world. Like, that's always been metal's calling. It's like bigger, better, faster, harder, louder. And I'm proud to say I'm a big part of that. Is a show bigger, faster, louder. It wasn't just the crew's calling card, it was also the anthem of old school metal acts like Black Sabbath, Judas Priest, and Iron Maiden, who were playing to packed houses all across the country and treating fans to spectacular stage shows. We wanted to give more to the audience. Our aim was to give everyone what used to be called the Disneyland e ticket. So when you bought your ticket there, you not only got the ride, you got all the accoutrements of the ride. You got all of it. 20-foot dragon that, you know, the roars and moves, the full laser show. I mean, anything you could think of. The 